All right, guys. So today I have Omar. Um, he's a natural born leader, so it was only right I get him on the Natural Born Leader podcast. And um, yeah, we're currently he lives in Montreal, so it was really easy to get this uh, done. But um, yeah, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hundred percent. So my name is Omar. I'm 29 years old. Um, I'm the founder of O Growth Labs. So we uh, basically serve as a digital growth incubator for direct to consumer brands uh, around the world. So we've been doing this for a few years now, um, successfully. Um, so that's, I guess, why we're here. Um, and, um, you know, we're serving clients all around the world from different industries. We've been disrupting industries left, right and center. Um, we've changed a lot since we uh, started. Maybe we'll get into that. Uh, I think that'll be uh, some great perspective and obviously um, some good uh, advice from you, hopefully. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get yeah, it. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you for jumping on and for making time. 100%. Um, we, you know, we'll go back to, to what you're doing shortly, but we're talking about um, the importance of just having visual proof or, you know, when it comes to like branding, right? So, you know, we're in a space where it's all online, right? So meaning people don't really get to meet us and really figure out if we're real people, if what we do is real, if all the numbers we talk about are real, right? Because... I remember when uh, I was just starting out, you know, you look at these figures online and you're like, you kind of like remove yourself. There is there's comes a point where you start earning a certain amount of money where for the for the everyday person where it kind of like it's too removed from yeah. their what their their the reality. what their reality is. Right. And, you know, I'll go on a tangent right now. Maybe we can just talk about you know, what, you know, what you've been able to build, what I've been able to build and talk about, you know, where we come from. Right. So I'm an immigrant. I was born in Rwanda and, um, you know, came here, came to Canada, Montreal when I was 13. Right. You're also uh, an immigrant from Morocco. From Morocco. Yeah, exactly. When did you when did you come to Montreal? So we came when I was uh, 12. Mm -hmm. So pretty early, too. Yeah. So I was yeah. born and raised in Morocco, Casablanca. Um, and then I came here with my parents and my sister. Um, you know, went to Stanislas. I don't know if anyone knows it. Uh, it's a French school here in Montreal. Um, and then continued my studies here at Concordia. Went for a uh, bachelor in civil engineering. Graduated, worked for two years in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, and then just realized that, you know, that wasn't it for me. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I did the shift. And then the, the rest is, uh, is history. How is, how, is, how is being an engineer? And being in business, that, that's a, that's a really cool, I'd say, duality to have, right? Because you look, you tend to look at things not as everyone looks at them, right? Or or the perspective you you have when you first look at things mm -hmm. is very unique. You, you you look at things for what they are, not what you want them to be, right? Hundred percent. Yeah. So that's that was a big addition to, I'd say, my skill set when it came to starting. It was mm -hmm. like, okay, this is what I'm gonna build. And I am going to be very objective about what I want to do and how I want it to happen and what are the necessary steps to get there. It was a very tactical approach. Yeah. Whereas I think a lot of people, when they start, uh, it's a very emotional approach, right? So it's like, okay, this is what I'm being told to do. Mm -hmm. So I do it, but I don't see the, the results. Yeah. And so there's kind of a disconnect between your expectations and you know the reality, right? Whereas I think in engineering, it's like, you, you, you're educated to not have that uh, emotional attachment to a result. You look at hard data, you mm -hmm. look at hard facts, and you you base your your I'd say calculations on laws, yeah, not your emotions. I think that's that's a, a good perspective to to have, huh. and you learn it in business if you stay long enough in business. Mm -hmm. But but at the start, if you have it at the start, it's good. It's all yeah, it's 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 all emotion and and. I think it explains a lot because so, you know, you know, within our program, we'll get people, you know, just like you are already killing it to join. But we'll also get people who are mostly uh, in their starting phase. Yeah. Right. And I had a client recently who I was on a call with and, you know, like I started asking him a few questions. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, do you actually have the knowledge that you need to succeed? Because when people don't have the knowledge, they tend to base it off of like luck. Meaning like, oh, you know, do I believe in myself enough to actually achieve it? Do you believe enough in me to achieve it? But it's like, you know, you can't really, I mean, you can get yourself 
caught up into your mind and believing things that aren't true, but you know that you will make it true because you believe it. But most of the time, when people don't have the underlying, you know, reasons as to why something would be would would happen, then they'll start believing that it's not true. Because if it's not there, you know, if it's not if it's not tangible, then why would they believe that it's going to happen for them, right? So I had a client, and I was like. When, because it's like he didn't have the knowledge, so I couldn't really explain it to him logically. But so my goal was like, bro, you're gonna have to believe that it's possible before it actually happens, because it's really two things. Either you're really smart and you understand, you know, you can think in first principles, you know, all these things, or you just are really your faith is really strong. You yeah. can't. You, it's like you gotta bet on yourself. Like for me, when I when I quit my job. Um, and I'd love to to hear your story when you quit your job, maybe even with your parents and what they thought of it. But 100%. Um, I did it off of faith. I didn't do it off of like, oh, I knew that, that this would happen if I did a X certain amount of volume that I would get a client. I just was like, you know what? I'm at a point where I've been at this job making 30K a year for two years and I could stay one more year. I could stay 10 more years, but it's like to stay 10 years to make few six figures is pretty crazy to me right so it's like my reality was just not congruent with who i wanted to become right so i just quit and i was like you know i want better so i'm gonna just bet on myself right but for you it could have been a different approach where you know you understand how to figure out the components of everything and you look at the variables and it's just math right so it, you know it's more logical but for people who are starting out my advice is like be a little delusional, you know, just think, yeah. believe in yourself and know that you're going to figure out. Because if you never do, then you'll never take the risk. And you nev- if you never take the risk, then you'll never actually be forced to become really smart. 100%. I think it's even better to have unwavering faith than it is to have an engineering mindset at mm. the start. Because if you start with a, a very tactical approach, but you're very shaky in your foundations, yeah. it's not going to work, man. Like what happens on the on a on a rainy Tuesday in February when you're alone in your room, no one's answering your outreach, no one is, mm-hmm. um, you know, no one is biting on your offer. You have to change your offer. You realize that you've been working for four months for basically nothing because obviously the yeah. market doesn't want what you have. What mm-hmm. happens then, right? You need to have that unwavering faith. I think I've had it for as as long as I can remember. Yeah. But I think one of the best um, investments for me in the college space was to have the engineering approach, right? Because I, I know a lot of people, they shit on, on college. Yeah. Um, they don't like it. I think it serves a purpose, right? It served a purpose for me, definitely. Um, but to anyone starting out, I would say have that unwavering faith and that delusional attitude. Where yeah. It's like, whatever happens, I'm going to make it work, mm-hmm. right? If you have that, I think it's even better than having first principles or a first principles approach or, or you know, whatever tactical yeah, mental yeah, yeah. model you can learn, right? Yeah. Mental models you can learn, right? If you don't believe in yourself, like how can you expect a client to believe in what you're trying to sell, right? Because that transpires. Mm-hmm. Like you, you feel my you energy, feel, yeah. I feel yours. Um, you know, I feel that you're legit. You feel that I'm legit. Um, on a sales call, it, it transpires. You're, even your team, like when you start having a team, they, mm-hmm. they they detect this, right? And so having that unwavering faith is like a, a shield, right? For whatever the market throws at you. Because yeah. it's going to throw a lot of things at you. And you I better know. catch some of those things. So yeah. um, I, I'd say, yeah, that, that would be my, my advice to someone starting out. Yeah, that belief is inevitable, man. It's the path to, to everything. Um, and I think, you know, I think I've heard a few people say that one of the, um, one of the, common like features of successful people is that they believe that they're somewhat better than than most people so you kind of like have to believe in yourself more than most people believe in themselves right you kind of have to have that that ego where it's like you know a lot of people think ego is bad but no ego is fucking good like you actually gotta you gotta you gotta think you can do something more you gotta you gotta think you're meant believe that you're meant for something bigger because if not Please don't get started. Yeah, exactly. The, You'll get destroyed. Oh my god. It, it's it's rough out there, right? Yeah. Um, ego is good. It's fuel, right? Yeah. You can either use fuel to, to make a huge explosion and kill everyone, mm-hmm. or you can use it to propel something. 
right? 100%. So if you use it to propel yourself and you're smart about it and you're aware, I think awareness is a big thing also, like knowing your place and knowing that you're not the smartest when yeah. you have someone that's smarter than you and, you know, listening to that person mm -hmm. or um, kind of defending yourself. You know, you were talking about um, the story about quitting a job and, you know, uh, managing uh, the parents' reaction and stuff like that. Like managing these situations, yet like your ego helps. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have ego, if you don't have belief in yourself, then everyone just forces their beliefs on you. Hundred percent. Right? You're like, mom, I want to quit my job, and it's like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, I'll just go back and yeah, you know, on the Monday morning. How was but how was it when you when you when you left your job? Um, I told them after. Oh, yeah. Um, nice. I told them after, but what I what I was doing before, I was showing them that I was actually trying something. Right? It's not like I came and said, I don't want this. I just want to do something and figure it figure shit out mm -hmm. it was like no i was doing something i was outreaching i was conducting sales calls it just came to a point where it was like conflicting with my schedule like i couldn't conduct sales calls and get on a on a zoom call with the with the team and stuff like that so it was like um i need to make a decision it's either now or never mm -hmm. and i quit and to be honest the the first day i wanted to quit was on the monday but i actually quit on the tuesday Mm. Because on Monday I didn't have the balls to do it. Yeah. Like I, I didn't have the balls to knock on my on my uh, uh, boss's door. Um, but yeah, on the Tuesday I did it. Wednesday I told them, and um, you know I just quit and never looked back. To be honest. Yeah. And I quit with zero like zero clients, zero zero revenue, right? Let's so it was go. like had like I don't know 10k in my in my bank account, yeah. not even like 7k. And I was like, okay, it's time Same. to make it work. That's good. That's, that's so yeah. funny because when I quit my job, because I had I had given myself like. 2020 i was like you know i'll quit my job in april and then yeah. april <laughs> came around i didn't quit i ended up quitting in like oh, on the 26th <laughs> of june and for me in my mind i was like oh let me stay at the job let me save some money but it's like bro you've been at the job for two years you haven't been able to save what makes you think that the next five months are gonna be any different <laughs> exactly. so at some point i was like you know this saving mentality is actually is actually a lie it's it's a just a it's like a it's a, a safety mechanism. yeah it's like a safety thing where it's like you feel like you need it but you don't actually need it no because because you know and this this is how I like to think about it is like if you're saving money is because you feel like what what you're doing right now making the money is giving you the money to save right so I got to a point where I was like anyway the reason why I'm starting to start a business is so I can actually make the money so why am I working at this job to make a little bit of money so I can save the little bit of money when I have another vehicle that I can actually go make a lot more money. That I know is gonna work. That I know That's is gonna work. Part. And then like, why am I staying here to make a little bit of money so I can save to go make more money? Yeah. Isn't it stupid? It's so like, like a, a, a snake biting its own tail. It's it's so weird. Yeah, 100%, right? 100%. So I just ended up quitting and it wasn't easy, but um, but you got to get over. I think you got to be kind of like, you got you got to get to a point where you're like, you know, I've had enough. Exactly. Like having your back against the wall and just not caring, I guess. Yeah. Because when you say, when you project something in the future, usually it's because you're afraid of something, right? So if you say, I'm going to, I'm going to quit my job. Like in my case, it was, I want to make 6K, double what I was making as an engineer. So mm -hmm. I was paid, I think 53K. Um, I was like, I'm going to quit my job when I'm at least doubling my monthly salary, right? Mm -hmm. But that was just a projection of my own fear of what's going to happen if I quit my job at zero, right? And that, that kind of hurts your faith in yourself, mm -hmm. where you're like, I don't believe in myself enough to just quit my job and, you know, go execute on this vehicle that I know works because I've seen the proof. I've seen people yeah. killing it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and I've seen people like half my age doing it. So what makes me less, I'd say, worthy of this, yeah. right? Um, so I think not projecting stuff in the future and being in the present moment and just saying, okay, I'm going to execute today, right? And and I believe in myself today, not tomorrow. Not, I don't know what, what April is going to be like. Yeah. I don't know what May is going to be like, right? Let's, let's, let's double down now and see what happens. And that translates a lot. I'm having this conversation with my team, like currently at this stage where mm -hmm. it's like, let's stop caring what's going to happen in the future. Let's just execute on a roadmap today and then we'll adjust, right? Mm -hmm. But I think what a lot of people, and I think we can get into it uh, a little bit later, is um, current success kills future success. Yeah. Or current success is the biggest killer of the future success that you deserve, right? So mm -hmm. whatever stage you're at, 
right? If you're at 3K on, on a nine to five and you're, you're th that success, mm -hmm. right? Because it is success, right? Yeah. Let's keep perspective real. Like people in Africa and Asia, et cetera, et cetera, they, they don't dream about that kind of income. Yeah. So it's still success, but that kills your 10K goal, right? Your 10K, when you reach it, that kills your 20, 30K, mm -hmm. right? Your 30K kills your 300K, mm -hmm. right, per month. So I think, um, yeah, I mean, current success just is the biggest killer. Yeah, yeah, I always say it. I always say that, you know, your current success is, is the cost that you have to pay to get to the next one. Yeah. If you're willing to give it up. Yeah, you're good. You're, you're good, good to go. And you're I good. can I can tell by just the way that for me things have been going on. It's like when I'm ready for a new level, it's kind of like I have to be okay with losing what I have today, right? And I think that the reason why most businesses go out of business is because they get to a point where their life is so good, like they're, they're, they're winning. So, I mean, for, from context, from where they come from, it seems like they're really killing it because they're comparing themselves to who they were when they were starting out. And then they just believe like, okay, I've made it. And then they just coast, right? Yeah. But just like anything, you know, like anything is meant to just you know, it's like entropy, right? It, it's meant to, to, to dissipate and to just get, get you know, get chaotic, chaos, yeah. right? Yeah. So I think it's the same thing for, for business. It's like, if you do not put more emphasis in maintaining and growing the thing, you will lose it. But yeah, yeah, anything, any level of success, get rid of it. Like whenever you hit a new height, be like, okay, cool. Now this is the price to get to the next one. So it's like, if you go from 50K a month and you wanna to go to, let's say two, 250K a month, then the 50K a month is actually the price for you to get there. Yeah. But most people will get there and instead of using the capital of the margins, the profit margins to reinvest in their in their team systems and more knowledge, they'll use it to increase their lifestyle. But then lifestyle is, is not really bringing, it's, there's no ROI on lifestyle. You're losing. Right? Yeah, it's negative. So, um, so they don't end up building any business. You know, I see so many people are like, oh, but you know, I can't, I can't get enough meetings. It's like, well, how many employees do you have getting your meetings? Or how many, how much money are you spending on acquisition? You're not. So it's like, it's normal that you're not, that you're not getting anything. You have no, no resources allocated to that thing. Um, but yeah, should we, should we get into, you know, exactly uh, your, you know, what have, so, I, I, you know, right now you're in a transition phase, right? And I want to talk about, you know, what you were doing, you know, in the last few years for your clients and how that went and then transition to like now what's your perspective and what's your insights on how, you know, this e-com game is pivoting. And for you as an agency owner, like what are your plans to for the next year, for the next five years, really? Yeah. So we started as a typical Facebook ads agency. Mm -hmm. That was kind of the mechanism that was hot at the time. Yeah. Um, and we, we had some pretty crazy case studies. I think you saw them. Mm -hmm. um, we had crazy impact on, on the way we delivered the service because we didn't deliver just as Facebook ads. We would, I always, I always position my, like my brand, my, my persona when it comes to clients as you can knock on my door. If you need help with anything personal business, we talk. Right. So I've helped clients with their offer. I've helped clients with their CRO didn't get paid. Right. But the case that I got paid with the case study because yep. all of these had the impact. Right. Yeah. Um, so what happened was at some time uh, around, I think, uh, right after iOS 14 kicked, start to kick in, um, I realized that a brand that's only, I'd say, relying on one acquisition channel, or one channel as a whole um, is doomed to fail. And I've seen it firsthand, right? I've seen founders being stubborn with one platform, trying to like force their way through and and just mm -hmm. you know scale their brand by force, right? And they broke their business. Yeah. So I was like, okay, how can we position our offer to change it, right? So that we can help people on a in a more efficient way, in a more efficient way, yeah. right? Um, and that's where I started looking at myself as a growth partner. Right, not as an agency. So I would pitch our service as a growth partner. We would only sign clients for six months, not three months, like everyone does. It's six months minimum. Our retention went through the roof. We we're, um, you know, keeping clients for nine months on average, uh, which is pretty wow. good in the game of uh, of agencies. And you know how churn yep. is. Um, and then I started 
kind of implementing new vehicles of growth or growth levers that we can pull on for our clients. So namely retention, which is a huge thing, right? A lot of people just focus on the on the short term kind of money, which, uh, which is acquisition. Yep. But then how do you retain customers? How do you extract value, right? Um, so that came into play. Content creation came into play also, right? And then one insight that came to me from um, doing a lot of research in this space was how can we like get a formula that actually propels e-commerce founders right to the next level if they go through a certain roadmap and that yeah. formula is the ltv to cac like ltv divided by your cac right mm -hmm. and you want that ratio to be as as high as it can be right so we started pivoting our offer to, to do you want to explain why that's important because because that gives you the wiggle room to do whatever the fuck you want with your brand right if you're extracting as much value as you can from a uh, customer and you're lowering your cost to acquire that customer as much as you can then that that curve is just one is exponential the other is linear mm -hmm. right like your acquisition costs are linearly going up but then your ltv is going up on a more i'd say aggressive manner mm -hmm. right so that's essentially more free cash flow for you to reinvest in resources and ads if you want to do that in a better team better customer service team better branding it's it's just r d it's it's, yeah. it, it's freedom basically mm -hmm. right yep. um and so we started explaining that to our clients one of our clients went from eight thousand dollars per month to over two hundred and forty thousand per month in just under a year wow. which is just unbelievable um they're becoming like the go-to resource in their own niche uh, but that's just a formula of winning yeah. right and that goes back to my engineering kind of background it's like how can I formulate success for my clients, mm -hmm. right? How can they make it unreasonable for them not to succeed, right? Yeah. With a system, not just by saying, hey, I'll deliver Facebook ads or I'll do your emails, whatever, right? It's yeah. like, it's it's a roadmap. And we're taking you through that roadmap and we'll make you believe it, right? Yeah. And you're my partner, yeah, right? Quick question. Yeah. Uh, for Did you have a, a hard time? Because one of the things that I've personally experienced is that some people they'll understand that they have a pain, but they won't really know how to describe the pain they have. So do you think that you had a harder time like getting brands to understand the value that you're actually trying to bring to their company? Yeah, some of the, the smaller ones, mm. <laughs> right? The smaller ones, because they're the most, um, I'd say, shaky. Mm -hmm. um, you did explain that uh, Facebook ads is not what they were, um, you know, like in the past. Obviously, now they're performing really well, but... Uh, at some point they weren't, right? You, you'd have to explain like, like people that aren't making a lot of money, it's because they're either starting in their journey or they're very stubborn, right? So you either, you know, talk to someone who's very, very, I'd say uh, like a beginner, right? Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, we need to pivot and the change kind of scares them. Yeah. Or you talk with the stubborn type and it's like, you can't do anything with them, right? They're, they're just forcing their way through uh, Facebook and that's where the breaking your business comes into play. Right. So the, the easier part was to convince the, you know, 100K per month plus people. Mm. All right. It's like, hey, this, there's a change in the landscape. Let's do this, 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 this. They look at the numbers. Makes sense. Let's do it. All right. It's done in a week. Right. We start managing their emails, their LTV to CAC. We change their tracking, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, the smaller ones, it's like, hey, why do you want to do that? And I don't understand. You told me that Facebook ads were this. I'm like, OK, but the space is changing. Right. And it's like this constant um you know just talking to to a child son like yeah. al almost right yep. um i think it's similar must be similar with you right yeah uh, when, bro trust me yeah. it is the same for me though it's like i've got to a point where like if i feel like you're not ready i'll genuinely just refund you your money yeah because the cost like you know there's no amount like the because um, people want you to make them successful but it's like like yeah, that's that would that's that you need to pay a lot of money f for someone to do that because yeah. you kind of like need someone to babysit you, right? You need to someone to babysit you to reshape the way you think, to reshape your habits, to reshape your routines. It's like that's not really what you sign up to when you sign up in our program. It's like you better come in when you're ready to actually like go get to work. Maybe someone out there is out there. There's a bunch of mindset coach you can go find them, but I'm not one, you know. Like um, so for me, it's like. Because, man, I know it takes so much amount of work to try to... Because you're not really trying to solve the, the understanding of LTV to CAC thing. What you're trying to solve for is them believing in themselves, one. Yeah. And what they think is right when they have no foundation exactly. on what is right. 100%. So it's like, it's like going back and forth into the abyss. It's like there's nothing. It's, there's nothing to... It's like... 
It's like confronting someone over their beliefs. Exactly. Even if I convince you today, you might come back tomorrow and you're like, <laughs> you slept, you didn't sleep well. You come back to me, you're like, oh, I'm not sure about this. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're not, hey, it's not worth yeah, it. Yeah, you change it. Yeah. So I think for anyone who's running a business, it's like try to, try to, try to get rid of clients who are requiring too much energy. It's like there are people out there who can actually value your your service without needing you to babysit them and uh, and train them to become a, a leader and a founder. Like, yeah. you know, become, if you're not already a business owner, then, you know, I don't know, go learn it somewhere else. Exactly, exactly. And it, it's either you, you babysit three clients, right? And mm -hmm. you lose your mind or yeah. you, you work with 30 clients Right, and you you make some real yeah. impact. Yeah, you make right. you make them some money. You know, no time to for babysitting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So so yeah. Now you know, and you know, just to to give some context to to your offer. Uh, you know, Omar has been in the program for a few months, and you know, he did bring up this. Uh, he's one of the first clients who who had an offer where he kind of like looked at a lot of all the all the variables that really matter for like an actual e-com brand just like i would personally look at a service-based offer and look at all the things instead of just trying to be like oh you need an appointment setter right so he looks at the offer figures out what are the you know products that actually are represent the biggest you know at least like the what are the products that are the most interesting for the for the customer maybe bundle them actually create an offer with exactly. products yeah once, once you have a really good product, then, okay, let's figure out what is the best advertising platform. Then once you figure out the best advertising platform, cool, now let's figure out how do we actually, you know, set up retention mechanisms so we can actually make sure that that client keeps coming back and purchases more frequently. So it's like, you know, when you showed me that, I was like, bro, this is, this is insane, right? Now, the thing, and maybe we can just, we can just, you know, jump around. You have a good offer, right? hands down but the thing is to really make a lot of money with it you need a lot of attention yeah which is something you've probably realized because I, I i've probably been in your shoes and i'm still in the same shoes as you where i'm like bro i have the best offer in the fucking market why am i not making a billion <laughs> exactly. dollars exactly right 100 percent. and you know i've been telling you this to go hard on content and because i've realized that like it's there comes a point where outbound even I even think that paid advertising hits. So there is this thing where it's like paid advertising. I still think is outbound, right? Because you're you're interrupting people and trying to get them to to trust you. But trust is not something that you 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 you, you just convey and and create in in a one minute or even thirty minute ad or even a uh, an, a follow up sequence of twelve weeks. I don't think it happens like that, right? Especially for a sophisticated buyer. So for me, I've realized that like, you know, that's what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to even build a like a content editing department in our company because I'm like, I need every person who's, who has a great company to be throwing, building assets, sales assets, it's just going to the world. Just let it, just let it sit there, right? Because I've realized that like attention, you could do a lot of outreach. You can make money. You could get 50K. You could even get to 100K a month. But to really tap into those multiple seven figures, five mil, 10 mil a year, you need you need a lot of people to know you. Yeah. And content is the is the, is the the best way to do it because it's leveraged. You do it once, everybody sees it forever. Exactly. It's, it just sits there. It works for you. Yeah. So, yeah, it's been, it's been hard to learn about this uh, kind of truth. Uh, but we're getting there. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we discussed this, uh, you know, a um, few minutes ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been it's been really good. To, yeah. to, to do right, and it's it's the start that's hard, right? Um, and it's just something that's unknown, so you need to kind of get your head around it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But once you you are in it, you kind of see the value yeah. that it brings you. Yeah. Hundred percent. And you know, it's like the more time that goes by, the better it performs. You know, like yeah. once it picks up, it picks up for real. Yeah. And yeah, it's just a muscle. It's just a muscle, and it just uh, it's just like an, any new habit. It's at first it's hard, but you know, once you have a team, you know, like you're building your team. It's like now it's really easy. Now the hard part is when you have to think about the content. You have to edit it and this and that. For me, when I started, I mean, even till today, I don't edit anything. I would rather post, I mean, I think I just posted like a two hour, 49 minute webinar on YouTube because I'd rather have it there 
then having not there with a team or me myself trying to figure out like okay what is the best thing to edit no no, no bro like just put it out there yeah. right 100 yeah it's volume yeah. it's volume it's really just finding your voice that's hard uh, accepting that you won't find it with the first i don't know 15 20 videos right <laughs> and accepting that um accepting a lot of attention i don't think a lot of people can withstand a lot of attention mm -hmm. um and and really just consistency right it's really about consistency so making sure that all the content is put out even if you're getting zero views and yeah. not getting it it goes back to not being emotionally attached to mm -hmm. anything right it's like tactical right yeah. it's like okay i'm going to do this and i'm doing it for x amount of days right per week for x amount of months every year right and it's going to pop off right yeah. i think hormozy did it for what four years until yeah. he got viral um and until he saw like the real returns that he's seeing right now yeah uh, like he was in the abyss man yeah he was Tate, like Andrew Tate was in the abyss yeah. as well, right? All these... All Iman these, was in the abyss. That's one thing that... Like all these big guys. They've been doing for a long, exactly. long time, you know, that yeah. decade or more. And I think that, you know, and this is where the beginner mind is, you know, it's like the beginner mind kind of like lies to you because you think that just because someone is successful today that you can just replicate what they did and like... Like if Hormozy gave you... If you went and lived with Hormozy for one year i don't even think you'd do more than one million because a certain level of success takes fucking time like there's like i could go sit down with hermosi and be like hey man so i have these offers i have this acquisition thing i have this he could tell me to spend money on ads i could spend money on ads but i would probably hit a bottleneck do you mean at your current state okay not, my, not my current state okay. but if i was starting out right yeah yeah and I have the same knowledge, but I haven't maybe put putting out content. Okay. I haven't built a small audience. I don't have a team, right? Even if you went and worked with him, you wouldn't actually hit crazy numbers because success compounds. And it's like it builds on top of it's it's a momentum thing. But it, the momentum that you get from from doing something for 12 months, I think it's good. You, you you can hit half a mil, a million. I think if you really focus and put your head down and really, you know, let your current success buy the next success instead of holding on to your current success, I think in one year you can do great things. But you won't really hit the crazy, crazy numbers because I've realized that time is probably the, the like, whenever time goes by, I'm like, I'm amen. Thank yeah. God. Because I know that it's doing its job. It's it's oh my god! It's it's yeah. a it's a best. It's my it's my it's best your ally. It's my ally. Exactly. It's the best employee. It's like hey 100%. man, let's let's keep getting old right now because yeah. I think the older the more time that passes by, the more insights you get. The, the more insights, the more people, the <clears throat> more the more the more the more. Hundred percent. So it's like if you can be patient, learn to just learn to consider your time as your ally instead of just being in a rush. Because I even think that you know great offers, great teams takes time takes to build time. yeah 100 percent. yeah we didn't transition into like we've been a facebook ads agency which is in my opinion the shitty offer if you're just pitching that yeah um for like one year and a few months until we were like okay right i think that's one of the problems with the agency model mm -hmm. is that you don't have the data fast enough mm -hmm. you don't get the data fast enough the, the feedback loop is is so slow man right so it's like you can have a shitty offer but then discover it only I don't know, like six, six months, months, one yeah. year later, because you'll get maybe two, three clients that'll bite yeah. out of a sample of 10,000. And you're like, okay, this is working, but it's not, right? Yeah. The opportunity cost that you had, um, you know, figuring out that the offer was bad because 10, like 9,997 yeah. didn't take it. And then three only take it, yeah. uh, took it. It's, uh, it's crazy. And I think and that's hindering, right? Yeah. One of the drawbacks of the, of the model. I think... I don't even think it's it's I don't think it's the model. I think it's the it's the people it's the educators in this industry. Mm. So let's pick someone who's created a Facebook ad course. We won't mention any name. That person will not tell you that Facebook ad is not the offer to sell anymore. Because if he tells you that it's not the thing to sell anymore, then his sales is gonna drop. Yeah. And to build a course takes time. So he's not it, like that person is not gonna keep creating courses every six months, right? So the goal is like, how can I sell this thing and shut up and keep promoting as if it's the best thing, right? And get as many people in. 
I think that the reason why we've been successful at client acquisition that IO is because we actually get the data. Mm. We get 50 clients a month, right? So I can see like, if if I go into wins and losses channel and I see a, a dip in wins, I'd be like, something is is off. When I see that, what I do is I look at, okay, what are the wins in the wins and losses channel? And I'm like, hey guys, emergency meeting, we gotta we gotta figure out why is this offer working versus all the clients that we've had who haven't been seeing success. Okay, cool. How can we promote this thing and actually get them uh, to use the thing? Because I think it's 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 even more it's even more simple than just the offer. It's just like sell the mechanism that is more needed right now yeah. that gets the highest response rate, right? So that's why for me, you'll see that every six months, I'll always come up with something else. Not saying like, oh, change, don't become, change your whole business. No, not that. I'm just saying put on the front end the thing that the market cares about. It could be UGCs. It could be short form. It could be all this stuff. Get people's attention and then give them what they need. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, because I still think that you can't just sell short form. You can't just sell UGCs. You can't, I mean, you could, but that's, then There's eventually, no competitive it, advantage. exactly. Then it becomes just a, another Facebook ad offer. Exactly. Yeah. So, so yeah, but yeah, data is definitely, I think, I think that's what really gives. And that's why for me, I've recently been more grateful to have chosen to do things the hard way instead of just focusing on selling a course. Now I'm starting to realize that like, you know, if you if you look, you know, you you've you you've been through our stuff, right? So you know, we give you a foundational sheet. You do a lot of outreach. You we reach out to a bunch of sub niches. You figure out okay, which one gets you the best, you know, uh, warm lead rate and all that good stuff. But like we have that on five hundred, six hundred clients. So that means that like if we, it's just that now I'm actually starting to think about it because I'm now doing more research on AI and I'm figuring out okay, how is these models you know created and it's from data. So I'm like. Okay, well, then whoever has the most data sets is the person who has the most uh, leverage. Leverage, exactly. Right? Yeah. So now I've been thinking like, bro, we are technically a data fucking company. So I'm like, fuck, like we could literally build a tool that goes off and, you know, I could literally hire like data analysts and they go through all the sheets, all the offers, all the sub niches, all the, all the personalized videos, all the this and this. And put it into like a model where you come in, let's say you're you're tar targeting SaaS companies and you're like, okay, what is the best offer? What is the best outreach channel? What is the best message? What is the best structure for a video? Yeah. And then we give you that and then boom, you go get to work. So now I'm like, oh shit, we have a, we kind of have an edge on a lot of people because if I sold courses, I could have probably worked less, spend less money on, on team, made more money, profit short wise. term, profit. Yeah. Yeah. But then sustainability wise yeah you're always stressed uh, if you're if you're relying on this because you're like your inability to come up with something new and spin something new is what keeps you up at night i feel right right so uh some people who we won't mention um kind of don't care about that because they're 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 too big kind of exactly. too big to fail yeah um but if you're starting out only relying on courses or only doing one mechanism for for uh, you know an e-commerce brand for example or just being a commodity in the market then you 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 better get to work because it's it's going to be rough right and that's what we're trying i'm, I'm thinking heavily about this i'm not gonna yeah. lie right because the agency model i don't think is sustainable um if um if you want to make it big right uh, i think it, it it breeds too much uh, too much complexity yeah. too much chaos comes to seep into the, into the operations if you want if you want to get to 300k per month with an agency man it's good luck like even yeah. the biggest guys abandoned that idea yeah. right and i want to get there right so so it's like okay what is the best vehicle to get mm -hmm. me there right? and that's what we're trying to do at the team currently is figure out how can we leverage our expertise that we've been kind of compounding for the past few years yeah um and offer it in a different way that's more leveraged yeah right? and how and you know if you can share more about that what's your game plan so th so the game plan is to um you know position yourself as an authority first for first and foremost um and then kind of communicate your expertise and then offer something um as a done with you instead of, the, of a done for you right because mm -hmm. in the done for you system i found that the dynamic is kind of skewed too much on you right like you don't have control over everything mm -hmm. like if, if facebook doesn't behave right the, the, the this month like you're you're yeah. screwed it's not facebook's fault it's your it's fault you. right um so you you even if you add other elements to kind of 
substantiate your offer, you're still at fault when things don't work, right? Whereas I think it's not fair to, to, to like the dynamic is not fair. Like yeah. you're, as an e-commerce founder, for example, at the other end of the table, you're still a business owner. It's like, it's still your business. Mm -hmm. You're still responsible for it, yeah. right? So why is the service provider to blame, right? Like the, the dynamic is, is a bit skewed. Obviously, mm -hmm. sometimes they are to blame, 100%, if it's an yeah. amateur, et cetera, but we're not talking about that. Um, so the dynamic, I don't like it. I prefer a dynamic where it's like we're partners and yeah. I work with you. I help you. I give you leverage. Um, I give you leveraged expertise where I don't only give you information because that's BS, I think. Yeah. I think you can find it by yourself. But I give you concise information mm -hmm. and I give you implementation yeah. in the best way. Right. And I give you consulting right, based on your actions because it's your business at the end of the day. Right. And the responsibility is on you. So there's this sense of, you know, making it by myself, right? And having an expert behind my shoulder standing, showing me the way. Mm -hmm. I think that dynamic is more of a, I'd say, sustainable dynamic where you can onboard more people because you don't have to do the thing like every single day for people, mm -hmm. right? And you can make a lot more, a lot more impact as well. And you can get happier clients, right? It's more fulfilling, yeah. right? Um, and you, you do things bigger. Right. Like sure. at an agency, it's like you're working with 10 people, 15 people at best. Right. 20 people, 20 clients. Like where's it, it's yeah, it's fun. Yeah. You're making 50 grand, 100 grand per month. But yeah. it's like it's still too small. Right. Um, and yeah, I, I want to go big, to be honest. That's, that's the summary. I like right? that. Yeah, I yeah. like that. That's, that's that. I respect that. I respect that a lot. So for me, um, I, I know that that's the path to take. Right. But I feel like the market is still too. Most people in the um, in the industry are not ready for for what you're you're you know you're starting on, right? Your the journey that you're embarking on, which, which is which is you know this leverage uh, consulting model where you're also doing implementation. I haven't really been heavily promoting it because mm -hmm. for me, I don't like to promote something that I'm not ready to like help you build. actually build. Yeah. Because I know that, you know, a lot of people, you know, hear this, you know, one of the guys who's pushing it heavily is Nick, right? Nick Cosman. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but like, I think most people who will get into this this leverage consulting thing, most of them will just fail just as bad as agencies. Because you kind of have to figure out an angle and a branding and a team and a really good content and a good audience because i think that to get into leverage consulting and just doing like outbound and things like that mm, yeah no it, it, it's people have to people have to come to you yeah right so for me i've stopped i've haven't really started promoting it heavily because i'm like even if i try to do it it's like it takes so much amount of 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 of, of structuring because what makes you different from the other agency who's also been doing advertising for e-com brands because if everybody starts becoming leverage consulting and offering uh, consulting and you know some type of implementation then who's different from who right but for me with client acquisition that io and building it to where it's been i think that i have a good insight on how to structure a good not just the the, the marketing and the sales but also like just the fulfillment mm -hmm. Because I think that it's whoever will deliver the most amount of value who will win. Let's say like, you know, you're offering you, the way that you have your LTV to CAC offer where you also take care of the, the offer for the brand. You'll go over acquisition, you'll go over retention, and you'll go over everything else, even content. It's like you could go in and, con you know, advise them, but you could also like literally do it for them, right? One of the things you said was... Uh, you know, done for you doesn't scale as much, but I don't think it's it's not that done for you doesn't scale as much, but it's the way that most people's done for you are not standardized. Yeah. Meaning every client comes in and it's like, okay, cool. Let's look let's at your business. Out. Let's do this. No, no, it's like, it needs to be a standardized process because cause I still think it's done with you and done for you. But like to really mix these two, you really got operationally, you got to be so good that you can sustain delivering a lot of value and still sustain a lot of throughput. Most people will just go to this model where they'll create content and then just some advising and have someone supporting, but then you have you don't have an edge anymore. 
right? It's like me trying to compete with guys who have a million subscribers on YouTube to try to tell people to start agencies. I'm not going to win. But if I have an operation of fulfillment that is really dialed in, where, okay, you're wanting to start an agency, like, and I can build an agency like in a box, where I have your offer, I have white label partners who will fulfill for you if you don't want to build a team. You have the acquisition team, you have the systems, you have the automation tools that are given to you, you have the script, you have the targeting that is done for you. Yeah. Then anybody who gets on that offer has the funds is just going to find it unreasonable. It would be stupid not to buy it, right? So I think that if you could do the same thing for you. 100%. It's not going to be like people look at leverage consulting as a glorified course. It's not a course. It's actually more work on your end. Right, because you need to hold hands with your with your customers yes. even more so than when you were doing it for them, because you would only hold your own hand. Like, it's, yep. you know what I mean? Like, you'd be responsible 100% with the actions. I don't like that dynamic, so I'm I'm cool with <laughs> holding people's hands. Right, I'm cool with that. Right, because yeah. I'm I think I'm pretty charismatic when it comes to conveying a good message, and people tend to listen when mm -hmm. I talk. I'm talking about my clients, um, so I want to do it at scale. Right. And it also comes from the fact that we have amazing case studies. Right. And so, so it's like that feeling, that urge to like deliver it to more people. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think a lot of people are getting burned left, right and center by amateurs. And the, the market is, is screwed in that in that sense. Right. Where people lost like trust in, in yeah. platforms and service providers and, and all of this thing. Right. So if you can come up, if you can spin or if we can spin something new, fresh that actually delivers value on the back end, yeah. right? It's like you're coming into a, a, a protocol. Like yep. it's not a, a course, a video mm -hmm. course where you're going to watch me ramble. Yeah. Like it's it's tactical. We're going to sit, support calls, yeah. um, implementation for you. My team is highly trained, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's, yeah. there, there's there's a good amount of competitive advantage on that on that yeah. front, right? Um, if you're only selling a course, like be prepared to, to create a new one every six months, yeah. right? Because you need to be able to convey what's good with ads, what's good with organic. Organic changes so much. Like it's like with TikTok right now, like yeah. every week is there's a new strategy. So you need to keep up with it. Yeah. So there's there's no way you can do that with a course, right? Yeah. You need to be like implementing in the trenches every single week, right? Yeah. Um, and again, going back to data, like you you know at real time or in real time what's going on with the market because you're serving more people. Mm -hmm. And that's what interests me. It's like the, yep. the, the scale of it. Right. Yeah. I want to be knowing of trends before they like when they're happening, mm -hmm. not when someone tells me on their YouTube video, hey, you should do <laughs> like four steps to. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean, yeah. Um, and, and if you can leverage trends when you see them and you only see them at scale, you don't see them at, at the micro one level, one thing. Yeah. Um, then you're you're really good because you yeah. can pivot your offer faster. Right. So it's like, OK, let's say you, you start an MVP kind of program where it's like uh, you onboard 20, 30 people, it starts well, you onboard 100 people, and then you start seeing the shift in the industry, and then you pivot. And the way you pivot, the, 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 the speed at which you pivot gives you that competitive advantage, yep. right? And then you're the one telling people, hey, there, there's this yeah. trend, you know what I mean? Let's go. Um, yeah. So that's that's what what interests me. Yeah, 100%. It's gonna be hard, like I'm not, not kidding myself. Like it's not, yeah. like sometimes people say, oh, I'm gonna switch from the agency model, and it's a coping mechanism because they're not succeeding here, they want something easier maybe, or yeah. they the grass is greener, like we yeah. say. Yeah. That's not it for us. It's it's really just a change in the way we want to do things. Yeah, no, I think it's like, if you have built something great, like, yeah, get it to as many people as possible. Like, go big, go so big that it's like... And also, it's like, you know, when you're small, man, it's like, you're doing a disservice to people. Yeah, 100%. You know? There's also another element, which we can discuss, is... When you do things, let's say you're making 20 grand a month, 30 grand a month, 40 mm -hmm. grand a month, you're only serving yourself. Like if you want to take care of your, I don't know, partner, sister, father, mother, yeah. like it, <laughs> it adds up it takes, pretty quick. It takes a lot of yeah, money. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. So being someone that, that wants to take care of as many people as I can, starting with obviously inner circle and then my team, obviously, um, super big on my team, love them. If they're watching this, love you guys. Yeah. Um, but um, it, it adds up pretty fast, man, right? Yeah. So it's either you you settle down, you're like, okay, I'm just gonna help at my current rhythm. Can't help everyone, just gonna help like, okay, you, 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 you. That's it. And then you like just stay on the side yeah, or you're like, okay, let's go big and 
let's create some impact, right? Yeah. Um, and that's that's what I want to do. Not not necessarily people you know, right? Like even we're talking about clients, we're talking about strangers that see yeah. your content and and get inspired. Like that's that's something Bro, that I that's the like. best thing ever. It's yeah. the best thing ever. You know, for me it's like now we're starting to do numbers where I can like, you know, where my team is making money where I'm like, oh shit, bro, like you're making a bit too much money. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, but it's like you can't, it creates a bond, man. It creates something that you can, you can't really, it's because I've been into big companies and when it gets big, 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 it's more like people are just like tools, you know, like, yeah. but like, I think when you start making, you know, multiple seven figures, it's still kind of like small because at least in our in our niche in our and space, industry, yeah. it's, it's you don't need a big team to make a lot of money, right? So for me, one of the greatest things is like when I see people who really dedicate, you know, to their craft in the in the business, you know, helping clients, building things, getting clients in the company and it and, you know, they're they're earning great money. And I'm like, bro, this is so fucking sick because it's like, you know, they become it be, they become like a, an extended part of you where it's like, you know, now your dreams are making their dreams come true. So it's like, whoa, this is so great, you know? Yeah. So for me, it's like, yeah, man, I, 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 I stopped chasing money for myself a long time ago. And I think it's the, it's the thing that allows you to sacrifice your current success. Because if you're just doing it for yourself, then there's no point in doing a lot more work to make an extra 10 grand per month. It because, won't help you. Because at some point you just, you, you hit a, you hit a point in revenue where you're making enough where you can get everything you've ever wanted. So like extra work is not actually worth it. If your if your mind and goals is to take care of your own self and maybe your girl. But if you want to, if you want to like get, so there's for me, I, <laughs> I have this thing where I say that there is fuck you money, but then there is fuck the world money. <laughs> you got to get to the fuck the world money. Cause yeah. it's like, cause that's when you can really like, inspire people inspire a lot of people and pay a lot of people and take care of a lot of people yeah. and man it's so different when you you know like when i travel and i meet people who like know me and i'm like bro this is so sick it's something that you can't like no amount of money can can like can can replace the feeling of you of having someone who tells you like hey man like you know this thing has helped me out and now i'm living um you know now i'm on path to to more you know and it's not just about money. It's more about, you know, like you said, impact. So hundred yeah. percent impact is a broad word. Like it's, it's like thrown out there every yeah. single podcast or every single video. Right. But it's, it's true in its essence. Like try, I would challenge anyone that's making decent amount of money, but it's like not a lot, right. Mm -hmm. To, to book your parents, uh, uh, one week trip, right. All expenses paid right? and see what that does to you. Mm -hmm. Right. If you're in the good state of mind, it'll change you. Yeah. Right? Try, I don't know, financing a school, right? Try doing things that aren't about you, right? Try not simping for, for your favorite guru's watch, yeah. right? And try to actually help other people. And you'll see that money becomes, I don't know, like pixels on screens, right? And it's like, what can I do for it with it? Yeah. Right? And how can I get more of it to, to, to allocate to all of these problems that I'm seeing, all of these people that I can help, et cetera, et cetera. So it becomes bigger, right? Yeah. Whereas I think when we started, it was like, yeah, let's get to 10K a month lifestyle business get me this rolex yeah, get me this watch get me this uh you know car whatever works for you yeah. and it's me 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 right and it's a dynamic that i think destroys your your mindset because even with your clients you lose this empathy like they become just a mrr booster exactly right and that that's the road and i'm i'm speaking from experience by the <laughs> way like i'm not i'm not making this up right like i went through this yeah right so uh, it was me, 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 uh, seeing clients as just, you know, we need to sign as many clients as, as possible just to get to that financial goal that, that, um, you know, that, that goal that I had. Yeah. Um, but it's not good, man. It's not good. And it actually, it's like a, a break that you're operating with the brakes, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. If you can kind of get out of your head and, and see the world for what it is and, and, and accept that if you want, by the way, it's not for everyone, yeah. but if you, if you want to make a lot of impact, just stop chasing baby money you need yeah. to make a lot and a lot yeah lot. and one thing i've realized is that if you really want to do big things it's going to take your whole life 100 percent. it's not a it's not a okay in 2024 then I'm, I'm i'm good no it's like you never you never arrive yeah so it has to become you have to literally shift your character and your identity to someone who's just meant to produce it's like for me, it's like I've started seeing business and, uh, you know, I had this guy who's um, we're talking like, OK, like, you know, how do we get to nine figures? And 
you know, it's, I was like, you know, I think it's just a choice. But then it's a decision. The way. It's a decision. You know, it's like yeah. you just have to make the decision that you want to go. You want to go after it. Right. But I've realized that if you really look at a lot of people and this is a funny thing, observation that I've seen, the people who are making nine figures, a billion dollars. They're not actually doing it for the money or they're not really they're not like optimizing for like, OK, what's our profit margins? OK, what? how much did we spend? Uh, how much did this employee make? Like, wh what's going on? No, they're literally like they're expressing themselves. They're like they're like artists. Yeah. Right. So I've realized that, like, you know, I think it's this power versus force. I think when you're starting out in business, it's all about force. You're trying to, you know, push hard. You know, let me get a deal. Let me get a meeting. Let me get this. But then you get to a point where you're like force is not going to get you to that next level. It's really like just. It's like opening up yourself to the world and expressing yourself and, you know, having ideas and having missions that you want to accomplish, figuring out problems that you want to solve and and investing your soul and all the money you have into building that next vision. Because yeah. and then that's I think that's the only way you tap into that nine figure or, you know, or a billion. It's like it's less about little bitty tactics, sh short, like, you know, micro level to like, yo, macro level, like what kind of how do how would i want the world to be for me if i was on the other side of exactly of, yeah and you do that with uh with a team you don't do that alone on your ads manager right yeah. and a team you don't get a team with uh, juicy profits so it's like really just flipping the what you learned on its head and and accepting that 70 percent profit margins it's not it's what it's, it's 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 arbitrary like in what situation what context right yeah um if you're trying to do things big you need to allocate money you need to allocate cash you need to pay your people well and it goes back to taking care of of people to be honest and not be yeah. me 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 right yeah um what do you think of matching your your words with actions because i think a lot of people say they want seven figures even six figures some yeah uh eight figures nine figures but their actions are, I'd say, are not matching. aligned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you see a lot of people just do the talking, just talk, talk, talk. Because I guess talking nowadays on social media, like let's say on this on this pod, I could come here and say a bunch of shit and you know make I guess feel cool by saying it. And I guess if you do say it and you do like you look like you're saying it, it kind of is kind of real for most people who are watching. Because anyway, once people get off social media. It's like whether what you're saying is real or not, what they saw is what they think is is, true. is is true, right? So you kind of like you think that you're actually doing something great. But I think that a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to actually make a lot of money. You I've realized that like making money is is just counterintuitive. Like whatever you think you should be doing is actually the you should be doing you should be going the other way. As an example, one of the things we just said is like 70% profit margins. I have yet, to, I don't really understand people who think that you can build a big company with 70% margins, unless it's a, you know, a software or whatever, right? If you're in a service, you, you, you're, you're nuts thinking, because I still think that coaching businesses or consulting are still service-based businesses, right? Yeah. You can still, I, you know, I know people who could even be doing like, you know, half a million a month and they're, you know, 70, 70% 70 margins. But how long will they keep making that kind of money? Mm hmm Is completely different. Because I think most people really don't, don't understand that like the goal is not you know, did you make it once? It's like, you know, can you extend can you the time? It? Can you sustain it? Right. Yeah. And, uh, and the, these coach, this coach, these coaches, coaching coaches, one thing they don't understand is that in, eventually you're going to run out of people to sell or the people you sold into the thing that didn't get enough value. Therefore they start talking. And if five, 10, 20 people talk, they're going to get, they're going to make you lose 300 customers. So that means that like you're actually going to have, I think Hormoz is the one who said it best. It's like you're actually going to have, you're going to be trying to market, but there's also another marketing going on that's actually trying to make you lose And that one's more and powerful. That one is more par powerful, right? Yeah. So it's like the goal is you got to be reinvesting in improving what you're doing, getting the clients, the results faster and more effortlessly. The only way you do it is more insights, which comes from people actually learning and spending time looking at data. More effortlessly, somebody got to do the work for your clients. Building systems or 
through done for you. So people who are trying to, um, you know, just say that, hey, they want to build a big, crazy company, but you look into their business and they have three people. I'm like, <sighs> how exactly do you plan on making millions of dollars? Like, are those three people the people who are going to call clients, take cl- take sales calls, fulfill, <laughs> fulfill, communicate with clients, look at finances, look at, you know, I had a client, I had a, an old employee who used, and this is a tangent, but I had an old employee who, who, who used my Amex because I try, I try I to saw trust. That story. Yeah, yeah, I try to trust people. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. You know, I'll trust you, and give you the opportunity to, you know, make, you know, make me wrong, right? But I, I'm never the type of person who's like, oh, I'm gonna protect myself from people. No, I, I like to trust people because I'd love for people to trust me too, right? Uh, but you know, that guy literally for from the January first till like January thirty first, he he paid himself his like agency like sixteen grand right on my amex and coming back to the point of not of of like needing a team it's like i had someone who takes care of looking at you know our pnl and looking at a weekly transaction and expenses right but she was busy doing other things mm. so it's like now if you're really trying to build a big company and you don't you only have three people who's going to look at the money when you're being scammed yeah no one is there to pay attention because whatever you don't you know if you're not paying attention to something, it, entropy, it, yeah, entropy, it breaks. It breaks, right? Yeah, it's gonna break. So it's like to really sustain a big company, you need a lot of people paying attention to every single detail of your company. So and that takes money. It takes as if margins. it was theirs. Yeah, hundred percent. That's another big thing. Now, I also think that to really make people feel like it's theirs, you gotta pay them well. You gotta pay them well. Yeah. Yeah. And the mission needs to be. Big, 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 big. And big. I, I saw that personally when I when I did the debrief with the team, end of December, mm-hmm. where like, okay, guys, this is where we're going next year, and they were like, whoa, yeah, we're in, right? And they even requested, um, one of them requested the call, um, a few weeks later, saying like, re-emphasizing how excited he was. You know what I mean? So, who am I not to pursue that goal now? Right. If if yep. if my people are getting excited about it, um, you know, I talked about one of my newest employees who quit everything he was doing. Uh, yeah. He's he's a superstar. Um, he quit everything he was doing just to join, right? And 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 make sure he was part of this because he believed in it, right? So yeah. who am I to tell him like a few months later? Hey, uh, actually, I'm just going back to my little baby. Yeah. Uh, you know, well-paying job. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I think the importance of A players also is 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 good. If you're an A player, you're gonna attract A players. Yeah. Right. What do you think of of A players and their uh, impact? Yeah, coming back to the to the mission thing, I think yeah. if your mission is not big enough, like you will not get good people. Because I've had, you know, so, you know, one of you know our business is helping businesses scale, right? So people who are also running service based businesses, and I think that, you know, Bell Hassan. Um, I guess high some. Um, I have a, like a lot of people in my company who eventually who actually learned about me from going through my program, right? Now, they could have gone on to just focusing on their thing, but they were like, you know what? Yeah, you know, we're onto something here with client acquisition. That I let me actually come in and put my my, you know put my time into this company, right? And I feel like if your vision is not big and you don't promote your vision and what you're trying to achieve, you'll rarely ever attract A players because A players just get get excited. They don't really care because if you really think about it, you can, you, like if me and you partnered up together, we would build something bigger than I would build me on my end and you on your end. So if you really think about it, it's a lot better to have a bunch of A players in one company chasing one mission than all these eight little A players working on, by, baby, on, stuff. on, on, on baby stuff, right? Yeah. So I was like, guys, if we do this right, every single person who is in the management level is a millionaire in five years or less. And this is like actually fucking facts. It's like, if you bet on this mission, in five years, if you also get like profit sharing, 
there's no way you're not a millionaire if you work with me. There's like actually like I can guarantee this that there's no way everybody on the team is not a millionaire. Right. Of course, you know, not everybody can be a millionaire, but a few people who are you exactly know, the super A players, the A players, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Right. So, but coming back to you, A players, it's like, I mean, I think you in a in a team, you need A players and like, kind of like, so you need the kind of A players who are doers, and you need like, A players who are like kind of like bigger picture people. Yeah. Right. Visionaries. Yeah. If you just have too much of this, then you're you have too much work because you kind of like need to like keep giving them what okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? And if you don't have these people and you just have B players, then you spend too much time managing, right? So for me, it's kind of like a balance where it's like okay, you know, like I need my COO to be an A player, I need one of my implementers to be an A player or a few A players, and then the rest can be B players. I don't really mind. I don't really want too many A players. Yeah, they, they can also, compete with each other. Yeah, they also start, yeah. like, there is a bunch of, like, oh, this, uh, I think yeah. I'm worth more, and then da 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 yeah, yeah, It's yeah. like, okay, cool, whatever. Then go do your own thing, right? But you need a few A players, and then you, you need a bunch of B players because, you know, B players make the world go around. 100%, 100%. Um, and what, what would you say on a scale of 1 to 10? how chaotic last year was for you last year yeah because i think you went from i don't know if you want to share the specific uh yeah numbers but it was pretty big evolution yeah 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 i think i think january 2022 we did like 50 60k a month yeah i was like in london and um when i got back man i was like i just did 60k in a month What's stopping me from 3Xing that or 4Xing that? Because if you really look at math, and this is, you know, maybe your engineering mind is good. It's like if you've done something, it's just a matter of inputs, Yeah. right? Maybe it's not going to scale linearly, but if you do more of the same, it's going to grow. Yeah. It may not grow 3X, it may grow 2X. But if you do keep doing more, you're going to get more. And and yeah, last last December, you know, twelve months later, we hit like you know six hundred something in revenue and like five hundred k cash collected, right? Now, chaotic, chaos, cha was it chaotic? Yeah. I don't think I felt the chaos, and do you know why? Because, because of our operations. Mm. Because was, was it chaotic building the operations? Yeah, it's like I've had to hire fire, hire fire, hire fire. Like it's 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 I've had more more stress from people in the company yeah. than clients. than like us not like clients being unhappy or things like that. No, that was cool, right? But like for me the the the, the hardest part was how do I find the talent? How do I find someone who cares and who's also good at doing? It's so hard. You you and I think, you know, I think the hardest thing about running a business is talent. Yeah. Because once you have talent, it's, bro, it's, oh, my God, bro, like... It's jet fuel. It's it's like you could be somewhere in Morocco and just spend there a month and you'll still make it more money than 100%. you did when you were working a lot more, right? Yeah. So last year was really a matter of, like, understanding that to hi I need to hire and fire a lot of people and I need a lot more reach to find better people. So, um, but... But, you know, for me, I think last month, too, last year's was more of a compounding effect, man. It was a compounding effect from all the work of the previous year and the, you know, the first six months of the year. 100%. Yeah. Right? I believe in that. So, so it's like, it kind of like, it was gradually coming because it's not like we spent money on ads. Because if you, if you've mastered ads, you could go from 10K a month this month to making 500 grand the next month just because based on how much you spend right but for us it wasn't uh it wasn't a turning up of the dial it was like it started raining and it rained yeah right so it kind of like was was gradual so it was like okay we're doing good we just did good and it was like maybe 50 percent more the next month but it's like we kind of like we're we're getting accustomed to to this constant growth of like you know we're doubling revenue every month right so building as you go right exactly it was it, so for me it's like even right now i'm in a building season right i'm in a phase of building but because i realized that 
if I keep just scaling, 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 let's say I get on ads and I start spending 50 grand a month, it actually would cost me success long term. How so? Because, because it's about me. Mm. It's about me making money. It's not about my client. Yeah. So this is also another thing. So as an example, when you get into this, when you start your thing, you start seeing a lot of success fast. One thing that I want to ask you, and you can look at even, you know, I can say it on here literally, but if you look at a lot of people, let's say like Nick Cosman, he had the potential to build a nine-figure company. But do you, I'm, I'm just, this is my perspective, my opinion. Sure. Do you know why he didn't? Because all he optimized was cash collected as fast That's as possible. True. That's a big bias of his, yeah, I agree. Every single person, I mean, it's a bias for every single person who's going from broke to making a lot of money. But for me, you know, I've been listening to a lot of, a lot of, you know, I just, I listen to a lot of, you know, these, these podcasts from a lot of people, who, you know, who, who are VCs and a lot, bunch of billionaires. And I realized that their, their goal, they don't really care about cash collected. They don't really care about, okay, this month, what did you do? Right. A lot of them are trying to build for for something that can last forever. So for me, I was like, okay, now I've proven that I can make a lot of money. But if I keep optimizing for this, let's say I have maybe one to two year run rate where I can really pound the market, bro. Like sell, sell, hire 30 closers, spend 100 grand, 200 grand this month on ads and make a few millions every single month for the next two years. What happens though is that if I optimize, because I can't focus on the client and focus on my growth at the same time. You you can't, I mean, even if you were to hire people, because even the team focuses on what the founder actually is focusing on. Yeah. If you're trying to focus on, hey, let's have the biggest month, the team is thinking like, okay, how can we get rich this month? So for me, I've gone from like, okay, you know what? Now I've figured out how to, uh, the acquisition game is good, but then how can I, spend as much time as I'm trying to focus on me getting rich, spend the same amount of time getting my clients rich. And that is, you know, let's say I'm building this growth specialist that are your program. Uh, we're building these automation tools for DMs. We're, uh, you know, hiring and finding more partners who can actually consult our clients on offers because we have a lot of agencies. So we kind of like need people. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a fucking running an agency. So there are shit I don't know. So I'm trying to find who are the best people in our program who can consult our clients who have better insights. So I'm trying to build those things, those foundations so that now when we do, when I do decide they're like, okay, let's take it to the next level, then it can actually sustain the new weight. But if I just build it on the current foundation, it's going to crack. And if it cracks, it, there's no going back. You, if a client comes in a program and it gets a really bad experience, there's no way of reverse. Like you can't reverse it. It's you, you, you mess up. You can only me you can mess up your brand once. There's no twice there. You can't go back to it, you know. So for me, it's like I don't want the 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 the, the bias of like wanting to get rich fast cost me you know get in your way for more success for, for right? getting rich for sure yeah, yeah you know so it's like uh, yeah. let me let me build slowly yeah so now I'm, I'm chill bro like i was in cape town i was i was in the present bro but i normally when i'm building when i'm you know like last year was like how many meetings mm. how many closed deals how can we make an offer should we do a webinar this month right but now it's more of like, you know, let's let's let 2023 be the year of building for the next five years of success. So now we're, I'm look, spending more time researching, spending more time le learning, because I know that if I don't go through this period of, of learning and period of building and not really focus on like, oh, did we make as much money as the month before? then I'll be able to support my clients a lot better than if I'm just always focusing. Because also there's this model of like, I get rich and I sell you how I'm getting rich type of thing. Yeah. But I don't think that that's, that's not yet what I'm promoting. If it was, then, okay, cool. Then it would just be a good flywheel. It's like, you, I sell you, so then I sell you and how I sold you. <laughs> that would be an amazing business. But I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to do that kind of model. Because I think that even coaches, coaching coaches, it dies out, right? Yeah. I want to build like an actual business, service business where Anybody who has a specific issue with their offer, their need of setters, they need systems, come in, use it. It's not about 
how Surge got rich. It's about the problem that you will inevitably need to solve. Exactly. And we have the solution. Exactly. So it's like, it's kind of like building just a, an actual formal traditional company that solves problems. It's not about, oh, here's my course on how I made a bunch of money. Yeah, you're way past that. Yeah, I'm, I'm way past that because I've realized that there's no sustainability in selling information. Because what if you get old? What if something happens? What if you people don't like you anymore? But like client acquisition that I could potentially become a company that doesn't rely on my brand. 100% your face won't be tied to it. Exactly. So what what has changed between your day and 2022, the typical day? Mm -hmm. And and, this and today? Year? Yeah. Because I'm maybe close to what you were doing maybe in January last yeah. year, right? So yeah. how was that? You want to know last year and yeah. then this year? And then this year, yeah. Um, last year was a lot of... I mean, twenty beginning of 2022 is probably like um, I didn't really have a specific routine, but later that year, it was mostly about management of the sales team mm. and the grow team, like, you know, my setters and my closers. Right. And it was always about how can we do something to generate more attention? Right. Every day, like wake up the first two hours of the day. is all about. How can we get attention? How can we get sales calls? Right? On the outbound and inbound side yeah. of things. Okay. So like I would wake up, write something, get attention that same day, and then try to use that attention to convert into sales calls. And I did it every day. Every day. Would you and do I, it yourself? Oh, bro. Even till today, bro. Like a yeah. lot, all the, all the marketing is me. Yeah, all the marketing is you, for sure. Like, Talk about the not, converting. Uh, conversations, the no. Okay. But... I had one setter back then. Okay, yeah. In like beginning of 2022, yeah, yeah. I have one setter. Maybe others, but comp came, you know, came and went, right? So people would hire a growth team, then they would, they would leave, right? Uh, and I did that, you know, consistently. Because I think it's like, you know, the efforts build on top of whatever. So whatever I did the month before fed into the next month, right? And, but something, you know, and this is something it's separate, but it's really important to understand is, Last year, we started doing something that's that really skyrocketed a lot of our success, which was we started solving the offer problem mm. by actually giving people the right trends to leverage. And that tapped into an audience that it just it just like I think we went from our biggest, our, you know, our first spike in growth in revenue is a month, I think it was like from April, May, we went from like 80K a month to like 180K the following month. An extra six figures in a month, no ad spend, no nothing. All from one YouTube video, right? I think it was the interview I did with Amar. He had went from like zero to uh, literally like 60K in seven weeks with his TikTok and UGC agency, right? Interesting. One insight, zero to 60K, bro. Boom. Like that kind of case study you can't make up. You know, you yeah. can't fake it. You can't do anything. And we did an interview uh, and uh, it just went crazy, right? And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened? Because this is what happened. So a lot of people win, but they don't know why they won. So when that happened, yeah. Yeah. I was like, let me take a break. Let me see what the hell just happened, Right. And I figured it out. I was like, oh, shit, we're actually, you know, we're giving people the things that's working and that's what the market wants. And three months later, started seeing, I started just understanding the content thing. And I was like, okay, sure, from content is the right thing now. Uh, we went from 160K to 340K. Mm. So right. replicating what happened. Doubling yeah. down, essentially. Doubling fucking down, bro. Yeah. Right? But then also I scaled my growth team to like five members, yeah, three, yeah. four members, right? Because, yeah. you know, the more attention, you kind of still need people to do the work, right? Yeah. Um, and, um, and I standardized a lot the operations. And I started including more services. I mean, you were talking about the daily routine, but I think this is more important. And one of the things that we also did is I started looking at what are people buying outside of our program. Let's say like you, um, 
you know, you 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 do a lot of email. So I was like, okay, can I also include email the an email department in our program, where it's kind of like you get everything in one. You get the setter, you get the offer, you get the email outreach. We build your email called the email thing, and we kind of like we kind of like have four different agencies in our business where we solve for every vertical, right? And that's that was also like not only do we give you the thing that works, but we also build the acquisition for you. Then it became a f- crazy offer, right? And people just started jumping on like crazy. And so that's what really changed. But so like, it's really, I spent a lot of time like figuring out like, okay, if I won, I would spend time like figuring out, okay, what is, what created the success? And I doubled down on it. And then I just figured out like, okay, what are the things that the market wants? Cause bro, I cannot tell you how much that if you really want to make more money, just look at where people are, what people are buying. And start offering it. It's literally the easiest thing ever. And how do you figure out? Just go on YouTube. Figure out the people who have the most amount of views. Yeah. 100%. Right? Uh, but yeah, so it's like that's what I'm doing. Uh, that's what I was doing back then. It's just really management, the acquisition, and spending time just writing the, 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 the content and the, the sales, the posts, and all that good stuff. Uh, but now, now it's I'm more so in a season of like I'll wake up. And I'll go for a walk. Okay. And just put on a podcast. I'll take my time. I'm in a, I'm in a season of taking my time. I'm not in a rush to make money. I'm not. I'm not. I don't want to rush anything, right? Because I've realized that like I've spent the success that I've seen in the last two years comes from the two years before. Because before I started my business, you know, I was in the basement just watching Sam Ovens, watching yeah. Nick Cosman, watching iman stuff all this courses all this knowledge all this knowledge all this knowledge so now i feel like okay like i've exhausted the insights from the first two three years of learning so now i need to get into a different game of learning okay now how do i build an eight-figure company how do i structure the team how do i structure these incentives what do i do with my money right how do i brand better right and now it's more of a it's more of like I don't want to do, 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 do. I want to spend two weeks learning and do one thing right. And have that have 10 times the output as trying to do like one thing like every day. Like you're you're like, because if you look at the big guys, bro, like they're not, they're not actively selling every day. No. Right. They're literally, they spend six months. Trilling. Chilling. Yeah. And then you know, we come up with a And then we come up with like, anger. oh, bro. Yeah. And one guy who does it really well is Iman. And I, you know, I, res- I respect him for that. It's like, he's not always selling like, oh, buy my course, buy my no. course. But when he does fucking do that challenge. Yeah. It's hard not you, to buy. It's, 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 you, res- you got to respect it because yeah. it's like he thought about it. Yeah. Right. And I think that that's the difference between it's like people are playing to just get rich to people are really playing this business for wealth. Right. Because. I've realized that coming back to the thing I said earlier, it takes time. So if you're trying to, like, let's say you're trying to launch this thing, I would suggest don't rush selling. Rush attention. Consistently put out bangers content, right? But when it comes to selling and building the thing, build it to the best extent that you can because the more time you spend building, the more leverage you have on selling people and convincing them, right? So like right now, I'm selling. I'm starting to grow, grow specialist that IO program, which is one thing that I'm building right now. And bro, like, I'm spending a whole day just thinking about how to create habit loops for members of the community. Like, just does like my job. Let's say like one of you know earlier this week was like how to create habit loops. So people stay in the community. It's all about how can I structure the thing? It's not even the core. It's not even the content course. Like I could care less about that. It's like, how do I create the habit loop so I can create the right habits for people and spend another day thinking like, okay, what systems could we build that make them leveraged setters instead of tradition? Because you've seen this trend where everybody's training setters, right? Placing them. Right. So it's like, but for me, it's like, I could do the same thing as them. But for me, my vision of this program is like, can I duplicate my skills 
into a person who's just starting out and they can go into any company and scale that company organically past six figures per month. So now in order for me to do that, kind of like I can't just teach them, I can't just give them the knowledge. I also have to give them the right tools. So right now we're kind of like building tools for growth specialists who will be going through the program. So it's kind of like spend time just thinking like how will this, cause it's like, how would this go wrong? And then building the, 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 the systems to make sure it never goes wrong. Instead of just focusing on like, oh, what do these people need to know? Because the need to know is 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 the easy it's part. Not, yeah, it's easy. Yeah, hundred percent. It's like how can they leverage what they're actually learning? Yeah, in the so, best way. Yeah, exactly. And so yeah, so for me right now, it's like learning. Because uh, I think if you're going to create, you're going to need to spend as much time learning. Because whatever you know, input because you know, garbage in, garbage out, right? Yeah. So it's like whatever you're learning is what you're going to put out. So I realized that like if I need to be putting out content, I need to be also learning. Um, and yeah, so like learning, building, and content. Do you have a specific schedule or do you function as, okay, time to learn now? Uh, n I don't yet have a, I mean, yeah, for, for learning, it's I, I do it uh, just morning. And then if I have, don't have anything, I'll just put on another pod during the day. But one thing that I do is I have days where I have days I take calls. I have days I don't take calls. So as an example, like Monday is a call day. Tuesday, there is nothing. You like, you can't reach me. Wednesday, another call day. Thursday, a building day. And then Friday, it's like a semi-build, semi-call and where I'm communicating with people. But it ends up being mostly communicating, right? Uh, but I don't have a clear schedule. But like for me, I divide them into days where I have to m manage and talk to others and others where it's just me time and just I'm alone. I'm just in my own little bubble where I'm, I'm learning. I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just like, a, I'm, I'm undisciplined when it comes to like those days. Because I feel like, creativity comes in, in when you have space. Yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people, especially beginners, kind of go to the route of aura ring and sleeping <laughs> yeah. like at the, at the right time. You should sleep like a good amount of, 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 of hours. Yeah. But uh, if, you're, if you're starting like that, you're gonna build so many mental crutches oh. that you, you won't be able to work if you don't have your little chamomile tea and your yep. little um, you know, incense, whatever, and your aura ring or whatever. Do you yep. know what I mean? Yep. Um, so I think that's another, I'd say, thing to avoid when you even not even when you begin, like even when you're at 50k a month, yeah, 100k a month. Like yep. th these are still baby numbers. So you 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 still need to kind of just yeah, be, be the guy who works, yeah, whenever just, or whatever, like yeah. in the coffee shop and yep. like and feel inspired to work, right? Yeah, I think I've been thinking about this a lot, to be honest. I think I think for me. And this is super important. One of the things what one of the things that happens when you're you start building a company is that you, you need a routine, right? I think routines are great. But for me, routine does not mean that I work from from 9 to 10 a.m. I'm working on something and then from 10 to 11 I'm working on something else and then from 11 to 12 I'm working yeah. on something else. I tried that. It's horrible. It's it's not that cuz I've realized that the best work comes from from when I have I have I have had so much space to be undisciplined that I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me actually I'd rather work. Right? So now my routine is I'll I try to, I'll never, I mean, I try to, I'll still wake up whenever I don't want to feel like waking up, but I'll still try to get in eight hours to even nine hours of sleep every single day, right? And then when I wake up, I try to like do something that like inspires me. Like I'll, I'll, I'll listen to someone who's doing great shit and they will make me feel inspired to go build. So right? podcast, podcast, videos. you know, Daily Mind Medicine by Taylor Welch is yeah, really good. good uh, and but like I try to give my, because uh, before I was like I felt bad when I didn't do things like oh I didn't meditate I didn't yeah. do this, yeah. even my aura ring I literally wear it like jewelry. Yeah, I haven't charged it in a, like six months. I don't use it since it's last it's time I used stupid. it was six months. Yeah, because it's like the numbers actually affects you more exactly. than the actual state that 100%. you're in. Right, hundred percent. So, so what I've started doing is like I've just started being like you know what I'll just work I'll I don't I'll wake up. And, you know, coming back to the thing that I was trying to say is like, I think the best setting is remove all the things from your life that you feel like you need to do 
and then you'll you'll only have work left. So for me, it's like I don't you know, I don't really do a lot of things. I'll probably in my day I'll work, learn, gym, eat. I won't be cooking food. I'll just order out or maybe have a milk kit company come in and deliver food. I'll go work out at the same time every day. And what's left? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just like it, all that's left is working. So it's like I'll revert to the easiest path, which is work. <clears throat> and that goes back to success is actually removing things, not adding things, right? Yeah. So you're removing meditation. Like, I don't like removing meditation, but you're removing things from your life, right? Like uh, the need to do this before work, the need to do this and to feel a certain way to uh, actually be in a performing uh, state. So that's that's key. Yeah. That's key. Yeah. I think also one of the best things is waking up and working straight away. Yeah. I've I've, I've, I've tried doing the the thing like, oh, you wake up and go work out. Uh, Not good? No. I just just wake, I just get back and I'm drained. I'm like, I don't... Because if I go work out, I'll go work out. I'm not going to just fake fake it in the gym and just be and, like, you yeah. know, just go walk on, on a treadmill. No, it's like I'll actually go work out. I'm trying to build muscles. So so it's like I've realized that like I just wasted the most, my, the best energy, the best creative energy. Because when you wake up, man, there is a state that when I, that I be in when I wake up, I like I can't make it up. I just, I swear to God. I'm tapped in with the source. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's because I just woke up or I'm still sleepy, but man, my mind is so fresh and I can you can give me the best you can you know you can put me in open AI and I can probably build the best AI yeah. tool, but I just feel so I just feel so powerful. Yeah. I just feel like I'm connected to everything, to all the answers. It's like my mind is just it's just so it's like go work out. Fuck what? Yeah. This is the dumbest thing I could do. Try to go build muscles when I could build something that can change the world. 100%. Hell no. For me, it's in the morning, but there's also after 5 p.m. Really? Yeah. You tap into that? Yeah, I tap into something. I don't know what that is. Yeah, after 5 p.m., like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., Yeah. Like uh, I get inspired. Wow. Like I I can't... Sometimes when I'm, I'm, you know, just sitting and I'm not doing anything, yep. it's, it bothers me at that time, mm. right? And when, I, when I'm when i sitting at my desk at that time, it's it's pretty good, it's nice. pretty good. Either doing something for clients or just getting an idea, like all my offers, like that I'm- 5 p.m. Yeah, that's the 5 p.m. time, <laughs> that's, the, that's the schedule. Um, oh, man. I've had a phase where it was, um, again, going back into the agency kind of thing, It's it's very hard to solve outbound for that model especially depending on the niche you're in yeah uh, but for mine it, it's it's definitely a hard thing to do um which causes you to not have lead flow mm-hmm. right and another thing that you kind of go through when you don't have lead flow is going through Doubt. a non-abundant mindset where it's yep. like i need you to be my client right now <laughs> i need you so bad right and and it puts you in a dynamic where it's even with your existing clients you're not you're not in a good spot Right, where it's like if they say something negative, you take it the wrong way. You don't want to uh, tell them the truth, even though um, you know not the truth as though you're hiding something from them, but telling them what they need what, to do, yep. right, and being upfront with them. Um, you're, you're scared of them leaving, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that come come, uh, you know, with not having a good amount of lead flow, right? Um, so I've had a, a time where it was wake up and go check Slack, mm. which is horrible to do. Like yeah. your day is fucked after that i know it's uh, it could be slack discord whatever any yeah. communication kind of application if you're dealing especially with customers like even with your team it can be like yeah oof, like negative. just leave yeah. me alone right yeah. um but with with customers especially you know we're talking black friday for example of that's <laughs> like it, it can be yeah like you can lose weeks with those with those phases where like not abundant and you're you're checking things because you're stressed and you can't build anything you can't build anything. And it goes back to tapping into the source or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you, you need to go into those states. To, yeah, you need to be to alone. You need to yeah. be, you need to remove things. You just need to be, you know, kind of bored and just not have anything on your mind. You know, you can't, that's why for me, it's like, it's the best time in the morning because the morning is like, for me, it's like, I've, before I was like, I would wake up and I really check my phone and I, I, at all. But nowadays I'll still wake up. And I think it's just because my environment, I just come in my bed with my phone right which is really just me setting up myself for failure but i think that what i've started doing is like i'll wake up and just check the wins and losses channel Mm. 
I'll just I'll, I'll, I have you know the habit of checking my phone, but I'll go and check just client wins. So at least I'm waking up to something positive, and I'm faking my because we have this you know dopamine you know we're addicted to checking fucking notifications. So I'll just go check the good kind of notifications and then be like, okay, I'm done with checking my phone. So I'll kind of like fake my brain or lie to my brain that, oh, I'm doing what you want me to do. But I'll just go check something that's positive and then I'll shut it down. I won't go check my, I don't want to go check my DMs. I don't care who messaged me. I won't go check on the team. I won't go check on other channels where there's more problems. And then I'll go to take a shower, cold shower. It's always. Uh, always cold? Uh, bro every morning bro nice. i just it just it just makes me it just makes me feel like a beast you know it's like not only am i smart in the morning but i also have my my energy animal going instinct. Uh, animal instinct bro yeah. it's like because it's survival instinct and like shower in montreal weather it's like bro that that cold water hits different it's like it hits you and you're like man if i can go through Let's this pain <laughs> i can probably do anything i want yeah. so and then I'll just go sit on my desk and uh, just start writing. I, I I always try to write, but I've realized that like I kind of like need to I I need inspiration. I need like input before I can output something, right? So I've start now. It's more like you know I'll go. I made a story. I'm not sure if you saw it, but I was like remove meetings and just give me space to go get a bagel and a coffee in the morning. Okay, that's your every. That's oh, your that's thing? my that's my thing, bro. Like when I wake up, just get in my car. And just go drive around, uh, just go to a coffee shop and just get a bagel, a BLT, you know, like just nice. bacon. Oh, and a good, you know, hot, uh, spicy sauce in that bagel. And then and I come home and I just eat it. And then uh, and then I'm just because then I'm also listening to something as I go get it. So now I feel like I'm at peace and I'm not in a rush. And then I'll just start writing. I'll write the first piece. Could be an email. Could be a post. Or I'll just look at the numbers that we have, and then I'll just set up a game plan. I still focus on attention every morning. Attention, bro. Like, attention is everything. Yeah. If you do one thing in life, in your business, and you focus on getting people to pay attention to you, you can have the shittiest offer. You can have the worst. You can be you can be ugly, and you'll still make a lot of money. Yeah, you'll make a lot of money. Still yeah. make a lot. Like, it's crazy. If you're so, handsome, it helps. But yeah, <laughs> I, I, you, mean, you better be handsome and cool. <laughs> but, um, but no, it's, yeah, it's just space in the morning. Just, um, you know, it's time. Because, you know, nothing great is built in busy, busy space, you know. Yeah. You kind of need space to, to build something great. But, yeah, I think we should wrap this um, thing up. Uh What's your, what are your, what's, uh, we can wrap this up by two things. Share your goals uh, for 2023 and um, also share one thing that you would have um, loved to have learned earlier last year, same time as now. Cool. So goals for, for this year, um, I'll, I'll just say them as, the, as I wrote them. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be 300K per month plus minimum. That's going to be the, the goal. Uh, the team is brief. Let's go. The founder is dialed in, so let's uh, let's go. Like that. Um, cultivate physical excellency. That's a big big thing. Started working out with a pro boxer, nice. uh, so he trains me every week. Um, he's he's a beast, Stefan Marienu. Mm. Uh, if you guys want to check him out, he's 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 a beast. Shout out, uh, shout Stephen. out to Stefan. Um, and um, the other goal is to take care of of, of my team, take care of my uh, of my uh, surroundings. Right, and have a have a bigger impact. Yeah, and and something more tangible is grow my my audience, obviously. Yeah, right. so so cultivate that attention and, and and grab attention basically. Yeah, grab it as much as I can, never let it go, and yeah. and make it compound on next year. Next year is going to be even bigger, uh, hopefully. Um, but those are the goals, like yeah. financial, physical, and then. Uh, I think three hundred k is a good month, is a good goal. Yeah, it's a worthy goal. It's it's it's, it's a good goal because yeah. it gives you stuff to work towards. Yeah, know? exactly. And and the hundred k per month feels like the old ten k per month. Oh, bro! It's like everyone is. Oh, it's everyone, not everyone, but it's like it's it's like once you hit it, you realize like oh man, it's just oh, it's like it's I I think a hundred k feels less good than ten k a month in my opinion. Bro, I still remember my t my first. Bro, 10K that first ten k a month hits. Different. I still remember it like like vividly, like the feeling and all. It's it's beautiful, right? Yeah. Everything afterwards couldn't care less yeah it's just another it's, it's just another exactly. thing um no i think i think you'll hit it man i think it's like you know now you got your content team dialed in 
you you're good at ads so you know your attention you can you can even pay for it it's not yeah. like it's an issue uh but yeah man no i'm i'm looking forward to looking that happen man 100 i mean we're gonna we're gonna make another pot next year and we're gonna say we're gonna share lessons to making it's gonna promote. be four hours easy the amount easy. of lessons let's go <laughs> cool so what's uh what's another what's would be your number one lesson that you would have wanted to give to yourself um a year ago so i'll go i'll go with two years ago Okay. Um, the first thing was manage your downside better than your upside. So manage your down days, make your down days the the best they can and even make them equate the best days of your competitors, mm. right? Instead of focusing on the days you are actually performing, because we're all we all have these days, right? Uh, but we also have days where it's like, I don't I don't want to do this shit, man. Like, yep. I don't feel like it, right? <laughs> if you can manage those days and actually make them even better than your competitors, mm -hmm. that's going to propel you more than the days where you feel like dialed in and, and everything is perfect because those are rare, yep. right? So that's the first thing is managing how, my, how my would down you, days. How, how have you been doing it? Awareness, right? So you, mm. you cultivate awareness through, I, don't know, I do it through prayer. Uh, you can do it through meditation. You can do it through uh, long walks, just alone with your thoughts. But be alone with your thoughts, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and not the kind of thoughts that are on on TikTok and yeah, like I'm talking uh -huh. talk about your your thoughts, right? Yep. Like you're being alone, right? Um, so that's that's the first thing. Managing your down days. The second thing I would say is um, just just understanding that your current success is is hindering your 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 future success that's that's a huge thing right everything because you can't expect future success with the level of comfort you have right now you need to let it, let go of it right mm -hmm. and i've been complacent and stagnating for a very long time at a good level yeah but it's still stagnation and it's not a good feeling even if you're stagnating at 300k per month it's not yeah, a good feeling not, right yeah. um so stagnation is is not good and it's it comes from not letting go of comfort or i'd say your perceived um you know the perceive the perception that you have comfort in your mm -hmm. current situation and and still expecting more if mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah right so it's realigning your expectations with your actions right making sure your words right the the words that come out of your mouth are Much. really aligned with your actions and that's super hard to do right you learn it every every day basically yeah right you've got some days where you talk a lot you don't do much mm -hmm. and you've got days where you you actually do a lot and you and you talk a lot yeah right um and that's where the magic happens so if you can have a lot of days where you're above your competitors even in your down days and yeah. you're still matching your words with your actions i think there's there's literally nothing that can stop you man yeah like nothing nothing it's just one decision away yeah, and, a, and a, a, a few more days of consistency. Exactly. I think one thing you just said there about managing your down days, and it's something that I talked about in one of the calls recently, was that our life is like cyclic, right? So it's all through cycles. If you look at like your life in a in a week, it looks the same as the following week. It's the same problems. They just, you know, it's just you feel like every week is a new week, but it's the same. You're living the same life every week, right? And one of the things that I learned a lot with Sam Ovens, who, who did this training around, uh, you know, just identity. And he 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 looked, he was asking, like, look at your life and try to track it for like a week or a month. Yeah. Right. And then he he was like, there are you you go through highs and you'll go through lows. It's just highs and lows, highs and lows. Right. But he shared this perspective that the highs and the lows are all created by something. So as an example, if you're on a roll going up, something will happen. It's a habit. It's an activity. A trigger. A trigger that will make you do something that creates... The downward trend. The yeah, downward 100%. trend. Right? So for me, uh, when you said that control your, your downside, I was like, well, for me, the way that I've been able to do it is... I've started removing the triggers, the habits that make me go on a, you know, on a, you know, on a spiral of just, you know, feeling negative, feeling in my lower self. And it could be, you know, not going out on the weekend. It could be not drinking for an extended, you know, time, right? If other people have bad habits, if you remove that habit, maybe don't remove it, but at least if it was happening, let's say once a week, make it happen once a month. Because then you won't be in your lower self for longer periods of time. Therefore, you're 
low days won't be your even your lowest days will be like still good days yeah because you don't have you're not in your lower self because you, you 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 kept the trigger away for longer so oh my god that has been such a massive thing like it's changed i think it's it's probably one of the most important things it's like staying away from things that i know will make me feel the bad, the bad the next day yeah it takes a lot of awareness though oh yeah it takes so a much. lot of honesty with yourself yeah it's it just you, you, you but you gotta want the life the next exactly. life more than you you care about enjoying exactly. the, the current i think part. that's the first action to align with your words it's like okay let me take a look at the bad habits yeah and let me assess it honestly what's going on where are the vices yeah what am i doing wrong where am i falling off right like honestly that's yeah. super hard super because there are there are there are if you can tap into your dark side and make it work for your positive side mm. it, it's it's gonna be a, a good super, ride i don't yeah. know where i read that but it, it, it's super true yeah that, that dark side we all have it we all have it some people control it they're billionaires mm -hmm. and some people don't and they're they're broke and, and addicts and yeah do you know and they're I mean? sad yeah but at the end of the day we're we're just it's everything ha every, everyone has it yeah no man Thank you so much. I think this yeah, this is this man. was really good. Uh, we're gonna have to do another one twelve months from now. But thank you guys so much for um, for watching this. I think it was like two hours. I think it's really good. Felt like five there's minutes. Some, there's some, there's some good uh, nuggets in here. But uh, no, man. Thank you so much. And you know, um, let's let's look up for man. the next one. Thank you so much for the opportunity, man. Thanks, bro. Take care.